All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Aquarium's Online Academy. My name is Talia. I'm from our Education Department, and I'm excited to share a little bit of my morning with you. So good morning, everybody. Um, today, we are going to be using a lot of our observation skills today. We're going to be using our eyes a lot today because we are going to be focusing on shapes and colors today. So I hope you have your scientist eyes and your scientist brains ready and awake and ready to uh, check out some of our friends who live here at the aquarium. Now, um, if you have any questions uh, or things you'd like to share or you say, ah, I noticed this color today, uh, you are welcome to text us in if you're watching this live uh, while we are airing at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, to do that, we have a number down below on our screen, 562-286-1838. Um, you're welcome to text those questions in. If you think of a question later, you're like, oh man, I really wish I asked Miss Talia that later. Um, on in the day, you can still ask us a question. We just ask that you email us instead. And that email address is below that number. It is live, whoop, live, whoop, there we go, live at lbaop.org. So there's a few ways to communicate with us depending on when you are watching said program. So please feel free to text those questions in. Now, I want to take a moment to wake up our brains. And let's make some observations about, not necessarily what's behind me, I'll get to that in a minute, but I wanna wake up our brains and let's try to see if we notice some shapes and colors around us. So I'm gonna look around, I always wanna point out really quick, I got a green eel saying, going on a morning swim over there, hello! He doesn't do that very often, so I am glad our eel came to say hi. Oop, there he goes, whoa. Okay, so let's take a moment. Let's just look around wherever you're at today. Let's see if we can notice some shapes and colors around us. I'm gonna start this kind of easy mode today. Let's see, I notice there is a big green wall behind me. So that's how I have all this magic behind me is I have a green screen behind me and I have my miss friend, Miss Allie, changing all the magic behind me too. She's gonna be helping me out this morning. So let's see, I have a green wall behind me I notice in front of me, I have a rig light. So it is a circle. It's also very orangey today. So I have an orange circle with my light in front of me. Let's see, what else do I notice? We have blue walls, <laughs> excuse me, in our studio today. What other shapes it's in? I noticed a lot of colors so far. Let me see if I can find some more shapes. Ooh, my television in front of me is a rectangle. And let's see, I'll try to find one more shape in my room where I am at. Ooh, I notice there is a fuzzy sea star on our wall. And a sea star is a star shape. That would make the most sense, right? It'd be silly if a sea star was, um, was a pentagon. <laughs> but yeah, it is. I see a star on our wall as well. Okay, so I've woken up the rain. And I found some colors and shade. <laughs> Our sea mouse just said good morning to. Oh my god, that was hilarious. Um, our sea star's mouth was a circle. Um, anyways, we've woken up our brains and uh, found some shapes and colors around us. I hope you found some shapes and colors in whatever room you are watching this program in. And let's see if we can apply that to the ocean. Because if I'm just looking at my camera. Behind me here, this is a webcam of our blue cavern exhibit that we have here at the aquarium. I bet I could find some shapes and colors in my exhibit as well. So I'm going to get out of the way so you can see more of what's going on behind here. And let's make some observations about blue cavern. All right, I will be back in a moment. So let's see, what do we see? What do we notice? Do we notice any shapes? Do we notice any colors? And I kind of started this out in sort of a local habitat, at least for us locally here in Southern California. This is kind of a typical kelp forest. Ooh, let's see. Okay, I noticed there are some gray fish and they have kind of black eyes. They also have black polka dots on their body and those polka dots are the shape of a circle. Ooh, I notice there's another little fish in the back there that has a black circle 
just like on their shoulder. Ooh, there's some shiny silvery fish in the corner. What do you guys notice? Hmm, here's some more spotty fish. Ooh, one of my friends texted in. They didn't notice rocks. I noticed those too. There, ooh, there are definitely some big rocks hanging out on the bottom. What shape are the rocks? They're big gray rocks too. There's lots of gray in our exhibit. I think, I think the one over here kind of looks like a circle. If I kind of make a circle, I'm gonna step away from my back wall here and see if I can get good at my backwards pointing circle sorta <laughs> this one there's kind of two rocks there there's one in the back and then there's this one that's a little bit closer i think this one is kind of starting to look like a square or a rectangle with all my fish are in the way now and now i can't see it but that's okay i think that one looked a little bit more like a rectangle or a square this one is kind of in between a circle and a a triangle i feel like it's starting to have a point here on the top but it kind of gets circly on the bottom there so yeah there's lots of different shapes and colors in my blue cavern exhibit hello my fish friends um there's some other colors in here as well right i noticed there's a lot of green stuff that's behind me and of course mr seabass is like excuse me please talk about me look at their beautiful circle polka dots there oh my goodness they have some black on the edges of their tails as well. I know their fins, actually, most of their fins have some black edges to them. Okay, there we go. Now we can see. There's lots of green in the back here, and that's green kelp or seaweed. Have you guys ever seen seaweed on the beach? Woo! Miss Allie just put us in the ocean. We got the motion of the ocean now. Whoa! This is kind of what it looks like when it's in the ocean. It's nice and beautiful green, and all the beautiful sunlight coming down as well. All right, so we have lots of beautiful seaweed in our exhibit as well. Let's see, what shapes? Do we notice any shapes of our seaweed? Let's see, these are kind of like leaves almost, and I feel like we got some like combination of shapes again. We got a little triangle tip, and then it kind of looks like a rectangle as we go down to the edge here. Very, very cool. So seaweed. And the colors of seaweed, actually the water even looks a little bit green in the background here too. That's another shape that we can see in our kelp forest. So we can find a lot of different shapes uh, and colors in our kelp forest exhibit. Did you also notice that in Blue Cavern, I was noticing a lot of gray and then a lot of our fish, hello. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> we have a fish saying good morning to us right over here. Hello, my friend. Um, there's a lot of gray rocks, but there's a lot of gray fish. And that kind of makes sense, right? A lot of times you think of animals wanting to blend in. Ooh, 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 ooh. There's a shark swimming by. There's our leopard shark. Whoa. They have kind of circly stripes almost. They have some rounded edges to those stripes. That was a fun little appearance. Very nice. So we have a lot of gray fish and we have a lot of gray animals um so that makes sense right because that helps them blend in or camouflage into their home kind of helps them hide from both the food they might want to be snacking on and also things that might want to snack on them oh my goodness so we found a lot of friends in our kelp forest exhibit very very nice um, we also have some friends that live in another local habitat uh, in our tide pools. So if you've ever been to kind of a rocky area where the ocean and the land meet, we can find, ooh, we can find a lot of different shapes and colors in here. What do we notice about this habitat? Hmm, what colors and shapes do we see? Interesting. I notice uh, there is some orange. There is some pink. There's even like some hot pink right over there. They put on some lipstick this morning. Uh, there's some kind of purpley pinks. There's some definite purple down there. There is a whole bunch of orange up here. Very, very nice. Oh, there's even pink on my rock over here. Ooh, and I also notice there's a sea cucumber 
crisp up there that's kind of orangey. Very, very nice. All right. So we have a lot of different shapes and colors in our tide pool habitat here. And we have some circles and we have some stars as well with our sea stars. My friends, and actually, I have a surprise for you. I have a special friend who's going to come in and talk to us a little bit about an animal that we have here at the aquarium. So I'm going to let my friend Susan come into the studio, um, and we'll see what friend she brought with her today. Hello. Oh, hello. Thank you, Talia. All right. My headset's on. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Susan. I'm part of the husbandry team here at the aquarium, and I have brought one of my friends today. This is called a California king snake. California king snake. Now, he's not very big. I know, he's not very big, but he's definitely going to grow, all right? When we first got this little guy right here, he looked, honestly, he looked like a black and white worm. Yep, a black and white worm. This little thing, I was like, that's a snake? I was so surprised I'd never seen such a small baby snake before. But you feed him and he grew. Yeah, he grew and he has grown a lot. When we first got him, he weighed five grams. So if you were to take two nickels and put them in your hand, that's five grams. Now he weighs a whopping 98 grams. I know, huge. Now, he is going to get bigger, like I said before. He is going to get to about four and a half, five feet long. So that's almost as tall as I am. So he is going to get a lot longer. And reptiles grow throughout their lives. So with him, he has a lot of growing to do. And of course, to grow, I mentioned that they have to eat food, and he does eat mice. Now, the cool thing about king snakes is they're king of all snakes, which means there's something special these guys eat. They will eat other snakes. Yeah, they will eat other snakes, including venomous snakes, which include rattlesnakes. So these guys eat tons of different food, the mice and the rats, and they can eat um, insects and eggs, but they also eat venomous snakes. So they're very, very helpful to our ecosystem. Now I mentioned at the very beginning that he's a black and white, he looked like a black and white worm and he is. And I'll be honest, now he just kind of looks like a big worm sometimes, but he is a very, very awesome, amazing animal, super helpful. But his coloration, his black and white, that doesn't really camouflage. Like if he was going along the desert, not big camouflage. So sometimes camouflage or to help the animal can be the same color. So it's a brown bird in a brown tree or a green snake in a green tree. But sometimes the colors, the more brightly colored you are, the better protected you are. Think of things that are brightly colored. Poison dart frogs, not something a bird wants to eat. Think of there are some butterflies that are brightly colored. They taste really bad. They don't want to eat them. How about bumblebees, all right? Bumblebees, brightly colored, and it's a warning. It's saying, don't eat me, I may hurt you. But there are some animals that have these brightly colors or very striking colors, like this black and white, that are not harmful at all. So this is one of them. Another black and white animal that I bet you guys can think of, kind of looks like a horse a little bit. Yep, a zebra, black and white, but are zebras poisonous or venomous? No, all right? but they blend in. It helps them, believe it or not, camouflage. So black and white can help camouflage. It can also be a very good warning of don't eat me, or maybe they're just pretending, all right? They're pretending that they may hurt you. Now, I would always recommend if you see any type of animal in nature, just don't touch it. Yeah, don't touch it. Don't poke at it. Stand your distance, all right? Stand your distance. Um, take pictures, all right? A lot of us have cameras and those zoom. We can use that zoom. But just go ahead and leave that animal alone because he's doing what he's supposed to. He's hanging out. He's finding food. Might be eating a venomous snake. All right. And doing some really good for us as humans and for our environment. All right. Now, I noticed there was uh, some questions. Has there been any questions that anyone had? Okay. Yeah. How, how old is he? Ah, uh, that's a great question. So the question was, how old is he? For this snake right here, he's about two years old. He's about two years old. 
And when we first got him, he was eating these teeny, tiny little mice. They were like this big, teeny little guys. And he was eating one. That was it. Now, we noticed he got bigger. And just like us, when we get bigger, we need to eat more food. And when you get more active and we exercise more, we're a little bit more hungry. So now, get this, he eats mice about this big. They're called large fuzzies. And he eats four at a time. He eats four just, and he's a great eater. Down the hatch they go, he eats four of them. And it weighs about 20 grams is how much he eats. Now he doesn't eat every day. I do get that question. Um, he only eats once every two weeks. So every other week, which again, isn't a whole lot, but how it moves through his body is really, really slow. So because of that, he doesn't have to eat all the time. Um, if we were to feed him all the time, he wouldn't eat most of it. And so we like to feed him twice a week. But if we notice he's eating them very, very quickly, then we can give him food the next week. That is not a problem. He tells us if he's more hungry. And there's sometimes like during the winter, because they are cold blooded and they slow down on eating, that they will actually not eat. And we're like, okay, we're still going to offer, but we're not worried about it if he's not eating all of his food. Okay. Snakes drink water? <laughs> it is awesome. So cool to watch them drink water. Um, they do get a lot of their fluids, a lot of their liquids um, from the animals that they eat, but to actually um, watch them drink. Now, I thought when they drank, and again, before I started working with snakes, I thought they'd stick their tongue out and they'd lip the water, kind of like a dog or a cat. I was totally wrong. What they do is they take their mouth and they kind of open it like this and they slurp. They actually kind of suck the water in instead of licking it. So they get a lot more water and it's really cool to see because a lot of times once they drink water, then they'll get in their water bath and soak in it. And then you'll just see them kind of and you see their, their throat moving and you can tell that they're drinking the water. So it's really, really, um, really, really cool to see how the snakes uh, drink water. Ah, uh, well, one thing I definitely know, they're not being rude. I promise they're not being rude. All right. What they're doing is they are smelling or tasting the air, kind of both. So they have nostrils. All right. Those are the holes. All right. We got them in our nose and we use ours to smell. So we can smell bread or brownies or um, uh, firewood or camping, things like that. We can smell all those different smells. He uses his nose to breathe. So he doesn't open his mouth to open breathe like we do a lot especially with wearing masks, all right? Um, what he is doing is to smell the air. He's sticking out his tongue and it gets all those air particles on it. And then he brings it back into his mouth and he swipes it on the top of his mouth. And there's two organs up there called Jacobson's organs. And that tells his brain, hey, there's food out there or there's something out there for you to eat or just your environment. So I promise he's not being rude by sticking out his tongue. And depending on the species of snake, they actually will have different colored tongues as well. Um, his is black, but some snakes have purple. Um, some, snake, some snakes have pink. Um, it just kind of depends on the species, what color their tongues are, just, which is pretty uh, cool to think about different snakes having different color tongues. A favorite enrichment item, you know what? There is this one that he really, every time we put it in, he'll go over to it. It's a half piece of wood. It's about this big and it's about this long and he likes to curl up into that. So I don't know if he likes the texture. I don't know if um, because it's so dark that he likes to be in it, but something else all of our snakes like to be in is dirt. So in their habitat where they live, we have, it kind of looks like, um, uh, like pine shavings. It's aspen bedding, but looks like pine shavings. And that's for easy clean. It's really soft. But we also have this big dish of dirt that we put in there and we get it wet. And so it's kind of muddy sometimes and then it dries out. And all of our snakes like to go over and hang out in it, especially right before they're going to shed. Because right before they shed their skin, they'll either be in their water dish or they'll be in that dirt, just kind of loosening it up. That humidity in it helps them loosen their skin. And then once that happens, um, once they're ready to shed, then they'll find a rock and we put these rocks that are kind of jagged to have an edge to it. And they'll start putting, doing this with their head on the rock and it starts to peel their skin off, which is so cool. It's like shedding. So it, it sheds. It's kind of like, um, they kind of do it. Like if you're taking off your sock, they start at the tip and then they coil it. It's inside out. So I thought it took snakes a really long time to shed because they always shed at night for me. And I'm like, all right, it takes a long time except twice now I've seen them shed and it's fast. 
it's like less than 10 minutes and our large snakes shed. The cool thing is I got it on video last time. So um, it's really cool to watch how fast snakes um, shed their skin. But a lot of times because we put that dirt in there that they really like to be in, um, that's a telltale sign that they're gonna be shedding soon. Any others? I do, yeah. I have one more thing that I think is really cool because when I was young, I thought that snakes, like I've mentioned before, were like worms, that they didn't have any bones. And I later learned they have lots of bones. They have a skull like we do. They have a backbone. They have ribs. And this snake here has over 250 ribs. And I know it's over that because I counted them because we did um, x-rays on them or radiographs. And I started to count. I told Dr. Adams, who's our veterinarian here at the aquarium, I'm like, I'm going to count how many ribs the snake has. And I got to about 250 and I stopped counting because I was tired of counting. Um, so he has over 250 just in this little body. It's really, really impressive how many bones snakes have, but how cool they move. And again, that helps with their camouflage and their shapes and their colors, again, to survive out in nature. All right, well, thank you everyone for having me and uh, my friend here out to the aquarium. And hopefully if you guys come, we do different presentations and um, you can see him out and about with your own two eyes. So thank you for joining us. And I believe that Talia is coming back uh, to talk a little bit about shapes and colors and different things here at the aquarium. All right, thank you so much, Susan, for bringing our king snake out to say hello to us. That was a very nice surprise. So we had some fun seeing our snake. I'm gonna get back on screen again. Well, again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with uh, me and Susan and our king snake. Um, we have, I think, a little bit more time to spend together. So I wanted to, we looked at some of our local habitats. I wanted to go to somewhere a little bit more tropical, a little bit more warm. Whoa! And let's go look at some shapes and colors in here. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna get out of the way so you can see all the beautiful colors in our tropical exhibit here i notice a very fun yellow fish in the back there there's a tang back there there are orange fish orange and pink fish purple fish oh i saw one the blue and yellow that just went in the little cave there oh my goodness there are so many different colors in our tropical area. and remember we were talking about camouflage as well some camouflage is warning saying like hey buddy step back but others likes to blend in with their home. So I think it's good that a lot of our fish are pretty colorful in a pretty colorful place. But there's some shapes in here, right, too? Oh my goodness, look at the coral. These corals here are a really interesting shape. They're kind of like a little bit of a circly tip there. Almost looks like a rectangle and then has a, like a half circle on top of it. Ooh, and I noticed that we have some fins on our fish that are kind of shaped like triangles oh my goodness now we also had um a tropical shark in here we were talking about a black and white animal i think uh miss susan mentioned there are that zebras are also black and white we have a zebra shark here at the aquarium too Ooh, and there it goes ta-da right over there now you might have noticed when we think about zebras you think about black and white animals. Was that shark that just went by? That way? Was that a black and white animal? Wait a minute. This animal is beige, kind of a brown color, and has polka dots all over it. So a lot of times when I'm like, look, friends, it's a zebra shark. Ta-da! Everybody's like, mmm, Miss Talia, zebras zebras don't look like that zebras have black and white stripes just like that so a lot of times my next question is well hold on why do we call that a zebra shark now i have to tell you that when we named the shark we were looking at them when they were babies so i wonder if miss ally can put up a picture of a baby zebra shark and that'll make a little bit more sense i think let's see i think she's gonna go look for a picture hmm we'll see Stand by. All right. But there's lots of dots. Remember, we were talking about our dots are kind of the shapes of circles. I noticed there's some lines for their gills. Oh, I actually noticed their eye is a dot. 
And this little thing is a datu. That's their spiracle that helps them breathe, especially when they're taking a nap. Oh, there we go. Ta-da! So this is what a baby zebra shark looks like. And that makes a lot more sense. You're like, ah, now I see why. They're called that because when they're babies, they do have black and white stripes like a zebra. Now, what happened is, and if you're wondering what this is, this is just a little metal kind of rod that they're giving a little snack to our baby zebra shark there. That's what that is in that picture. But anywho, uh, what happened is the stripes, they started to stretch and stretch. This is what they look like kind of when they're a teenager. So you can kind of see the stripes are still there but they're kind of starting to break up. So they stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched. And we went from this halfway point to being polka dots all over. And that's why, just like that, that's why the zebra shark doesn't quite look like a zebra when it's a grown up, but it definitely looks like a zebra when it is a baby. So that's kind of a fun animal that we have here at the aquarium that not only changes its colors, but changes kind of the shapes on their body as well. Now there are a lot of colors behind me too. Let's see, I noticed some kind of yellowy green coral here. I noticed some circly coral over here. There's some purple and some pink. Let's see, what other colors or shapes do I notice? And again, if you have any last minute questions, we have another minute or two to hang out today. So you're welcome to either text those last minute questions in, or if you think of that later, you're welcome to use that email address down below on your screen. Ooh, there's another shark. There's a bonnet head shark that went by. I think sharks' favorite shape is a triangle because they have triangly fins. They have triangly tails. They even, ah, like our zebra shark, or excuse me, our leopard shark here. Triangle fins, triangle tail, triangle fins, triangle fins, triangle tails back there. And even their teeth are kind of triangles too. So they love triangles. And then our, our leopard shark here has some kind of circly stripes and some circly polka dots as well. Very nice. All right, my friends. Um, I think we have time for maybe one more animal. Miss Allie, do you want to pick your favorite animal? Okay, she said, yes, she does. So she's going to surprise me. Aha! That is a fun animal. This is another friend who lives in warm, tropical places. This, I believe, is a butterfly fish. And it has so many shapes and colors on it. Oh, my goodness. It kind of has a triangly... It has definitely has a triangly tail. It has a big circle boop, right up there. And that is to help... Um, that is a false eye spot, so it helps confuse predators to be like, what is the front of this animal? Is it here? Or is it there where its circly eye is? I love its stripes. It has yellow stripes and white stripes and even has some black edges to those stripes. It has a very long white mouth over there to help pick, 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 pick at the algae and the corals and stuff like that. So it is a very fun fish that lives in a very warm tropical place. So my friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and waking up our scientist brains using our observation skills to look at colors and shapes here at the aquarium in a couple of our exhibits. And then we had a fun surprise with Susan and our king snake who is black and white hanging out with us as well. So I encourage you guys to keep on exploring, keep on noticing those shapes and colors around you as you go about your day. Thank you for joining us here at the aquarium. If there's any teachers watching, we encourage you guys to text in the number of students that are watching with you just so we can get a little better idea uh, of our viewership and how we're serving our uh, different communities here at the aquarium. So thank you guys very much for joining us again. If you have any more questions, we encourage you to email us since we're going to be going off the air in just a moment here. So email us those questions now at live at lbaop.org. Again, thank you so much for joining us this morning and have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone.